is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. 888-900-3393. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. I tell you, I can't help but marvel at the guts, the inventiveness, uh, the ability to put together the intel uh, that Israel has done on these attacks. The first one, (laughs) they had to... They had to know that Hezbollah was switching from phones to pagers. Then they had to find out who was manufacturing and delivering those pagers. Then they clandestinely intercepted that shipment, rigged all of them, all of these pagers with explosives, and then seamlessly exploded them all (laughs) without being detected. And then they did it again the next day, yesterday. Uh, Or, yeah, it was yesterday, right? Yeah. So, uh, absolutely phenomenal. So who knows what today will bring. Yeah. If you're a a Hezbollah terrorist, aren't you a little bit nervous of using anything (laughs) electronic? Uh, Well, yeah. The leader of Hezbollah, I think it's 9 a.m. Central time, so three hours from now. I think I read this correctly. He's supposed to uh, address uh, all that's been going on, and what I guess the next steps are for. I'd be turning himself in. I'd worried about the microphone that he's going to be talking. Yeah, no kidding. Honestly, that's for sure. (laughs) I wouldn't be turning on televisions. I mean, yesterday it was walkie-talkies, radios, uh, the finger scanners, fingerprint scanners. Oh, it's just insane. Incredible. This is a country of nine million people, surrounded by over two hundred million people who hate their guts and want them annihilated, want them wiped from the face of the earth. So because of that, out of necessity, they've had to develop these you know, methods, serious methods, to protect themselves. And they, they do whatever it takes. I, I can't help but sit back and be in awe of what they're accomplishing here. Yeah. By the way, shout out to uh, Shane2900 on Twitter. Uh, New slogan now. Uh, From the liver to the knee, Hezbollah will be organ free. That's good. (laughs) I like that. Wow. I tell you, honestly, if you're Hezbollah, are you not just like, what is today going to bring? Yes. I mean, we have. You'd uh, be living in fear right now. Absolutely. Look, that, I mean, that's what terror thrives on. So Mm -hmm. it's just uh, turnabout is fair play. Am I right? Uh, we have the montage of, of what happened uh, throughout uh, Beirut yesterday. If you'd like to see the uh, explosions um, as they happened, we're going to play that montage mm-hmm. here. Okay. So this is uh, some of the chaos there. Oh, boy. Uh, there's a charred scooter. Oh. Something on fire? Hope car? You, hope mm-hmm. you get the Carfax oh, on that one. Sheesh. Eesh. That's not good. Wow. This is all the aftermath. There's an par- apartment there on fire, the living room blown up. Gibberish for some reason, again being spoken. Talking on a walkie talkie. Hmm. Uh, there's a funeral here from yesterday, so the, uh, two days ago. They're already they're trying to bury the dead from two days ago, and then this happens. Oops. <laughs> And now this next shot Insane. is of the skyline of Beirut. Uh, oh, here's oh, yeah. another shot of this, I think. Or maybe it's the... That sure is some cheerful music for yeah, burying for your dead. Yeah, for a funeral? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right. And okay, then, so, yeah, this time lapse. Yeah. You'll start seeing plumes of smoke. It's hard to see off in the distance. Yeah, there it is. There's one, one there's to the right. A, there's a couple off the upper left there. <laughs> um, there's one. Oh, that was something There's happened. one. Eh, that was mm. probably that car. Wow. Yeah, so uh, good day. Uh, yeah, not a good day to be a Hezbollah terrorist, no. but uh, a good day for, for Israel. You know, and then people are weeping and wailing and gnashing. their. How can you do this? They're terrorists. Yeah. They're terrorists. At least 20 people were killed again yesterday. So more people were killed in this attack than the first with the pagers. Yeah, what are we up to on two days ago? Do we know? I think 12. 12? Okay. 12. That's the last I heard. It was 12 a okay. uh, couple of days ago, and then 20 more yesterday. 450 mm. wounded 
in the second wave of blasts. <laughs> have phones this time, so phones went off too. Solar energy systems, and of course the fingerprint reading devices used by the group. Fascinating, incredible. <laughs> okay. Oh, there will be. Oh, yeah. there will be books written about this. There will be movies based on this. Uh this is astounding. Yeah. You talk about a country that punches above their weight. <laughs> Israel is the quintessential nation that does that. Also, Israeli tanks yeah. are headed to Lebanon. Yep, this is uh, last night. Uh, <clears throat> now, somebody should maybe uh, page the uh, Hezbollah or maybe get on the walkie-talk. Oh, you probably don't. Maybe that's not going to work. You'll kind of warn them. Yeah. But yeah, so that Smoke was last signal? night. Yeah. Will their smoke signal blow up, too? <laughs> yeah. They probably don't know right now. They have no idea what's next. <laughs> yeah. So I was just reading an article, speaking of tanks, over the weekend about how vulnerable tanks now are mm-hmm. because of the new technology, the drones. Right. And so they're building cages on top of the tanks to oh, protect wow. the turret, and they're camouflaging them and trying to not be detected. And I guess they have to move. The second they're used, you got to move them to a different location. Otherwise, it's going to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. Then there were Israeli airstrikes yeah. overnight. Yep. These are targeted. Mm. There you go. So So which would you rather have? <laughs> would you rather have the bombs coming down and exploding like that? Or would you rather have these targeted explosions that are personal? I mean, because you've got your personal device there, and that blows up. Some <laughs> might get caught up in that too, but certainly That's others are going to get incredible. hit by bombs like this. Just incredible. Now, you talked about how, and this is definitely just an ingenious plan, and we don't even know if it's done yet for Israel. We yeah. have no idea. I mean, <laughs> so nobody knows. All right, right. So, um, And that's the point, really, with the terrorists, too. Keep them guessing. Yeah. Keep them guessing. Mm-hmm. And I ha- absolutely hate the collateral damage of children. A yes, I do, too. I do, too. Do you think that war is fair? And 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 think of nope. the collateral damage. Terrorists don't care. They live for collateral damage. They want collateral. They want children to be killed. Mm-hmm. So just keep that in mind as children are, are being killed in this. It's horrific. Uh, and it's just terrible that their parents are involved with terrorism. But you talked about how this is an ingenious plan that Israel is carrying out. Mm-hmm. There was a U.S. soldier that made a video yesterday. You got to see this. I learned some history here. Okay. HLC, did you see that they modified their pagers and people got hurt? Yes, I'm already working on jokes. And before anyone asks me, don't you feel bad for them? Do I feel bad for terrorists considering two of my friends were killed by them, three more were wounded, and they tried to kill me and the rest of my friends? Ask your stupid <laughs> question again. We don't act like this is the first time this has ever happened. Listen to this. Vietnam, Project Eldest Son. You see, for the first time in history, the United States actually went toe-to-toe with an unconventional enemy because they figured out, well, you don't want to stand up against Uncle Sam. Maybe they were smarter than the rest of them. So what did they do? They took off their uniform and blended in amongst the population. So Project Eldest Son, also like Green Bean and had like six other names, but the official name was Eldest Son. The U.S. government created exploding AK-47 cartridges and then covertly put them into circulation in the enemy weapon. And honestly, this is kind of ingenious considering the only people who are going to suffer from this are the ones shooting at GI. They had a ton of this stuff. So fast forward to the global war on terrorism. Some of this stuff was still in circulation. So bad guys have been blowing themselves up for a while. Mm. I didn't. I've never heard that before. Me either. That's fascinating. That's cool. <laughs> so things like this have happened in the past, and we did it. <laughs> I, I would like to point out wow. that we did this, uh, you know, half a century or more ago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that uh, I don't know that that plan would get by. Uh, oh, I don't think any it would. U.S. president of any party. No, today. I don't think it would. Maybe Trump would approve that. Possibly. <laughs> yeah. We know Bush wouldn't. Oh no. Clinton. No. Uh, it Obama, takes takes giblets Biden. to do something like this. Yeah. It, uh, it takes nerves of steel. Plus, it takes patience. Uh, you know, these things don't come to fruition immediately. You got to wait for the right time and. Hold your breath and just let it unfold. Yeah, coming up in overtime today, we have a former IDF spokesman. Uh, it's a long clip, but um, the BBC was trying to get him to, you know, say, "Hey, you know, this is basically denounce these attacks because innocent people mm-hmm. get hurt have been by them." Hurt? Yeah, he yeah. Uh, he masterfully puts them in their place. It's good stuff. Ah, good, yeah. good. Well, thirty-two people killed so far in these in these. Two separate attacks. 
uh, and thousands and thousands wounded. <laughs> and if you, again, if you're a Hezbollah fighter, aren't you thinking twice about your position in, in society right now? I think I would be. I'd be reevaluating. I'm keeping electronics uh, away from my uh, giblets, my yeah. hands, uh-huh. my head. They're on the other side. They're out in the yard. You know what? I'm throwing them in the lake with Pat's guns. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And then all of a sudden you see the lake explode. <laughs> Good move. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it creates that bit of doubt. You might be looking for a new vocation today. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll find something else to do with my time <laughs> other than seek to destroy Israel. Maybe that's not such a good idea after all. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Uh, on the campaign trail here in America, who's going to be our commander in chief uh, beginning January 20th and for the next four years after that? Um, you know, Kamala Harris, I guess, is doing a they're doing a virtual rally today with Oprah Winfrey. Oh, cool. Yeah, won't that be fun? That'll be fun. That'd be fun. That's the word. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, huge rally for Trump yesterday. Oh, um, yeah, New York, right? Yeah, Long Ooh, Island. Ooh. He, according to the article, he leaned heavily on his alarmist message on immigration at his rally in Uniondale, Long Island. Um, hmm. Alarmist messages? Th- those... Uh, belong exclusively to Trump, I guess. Hmm. When the left is calling him a threat to democracy, a threat to our nation, an existential threat to the world. Uh, uh, Trump said, we're just destroying the fabric of life in our country, and we're not going to take it any longer. And you've got to get rid of these people. Give me a shot. Look at the streets lined with supporters. Yeah, That's a deep blue Again, city New York. a deep blue state. That is so... Awesome. They requested 60,000 tickets for a venue that holds (laughs) 16,000. There were tens of thousands of people waiting outside, and they just stayed and watched it on a big screen. New York. He thinks he can flip New York. Oh, please. Oh, please make that so. From his lips to God's ears. And there was a bomb threat, right, Chris? There was a bomb threat there. Is that... uh, Did I see Mm. something on that? No, they, they thought they found a bomb, but... Okay. Nothing came out of it. Okay. A dog sniff a car and oh. sat on. All so, right. So it wasn't, there was no bomb? According to oh, the Daily Mail, no. Okay. Good. Security was a little bit tighter, I understand, yes, it this was. time. Mm. Yeah, that's a good idea. And they put a tent as Trump was exiting <clears throat> the, mm. the the vehicles. So they, they pulled yeah. up into a tent. So it was he was covered at all times. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. 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 Finally. Okay. But, but if you're the Kamala Harris camp... Or, or a Democrat right now, and you're seeing that the streets line of New York City mm-hmm. for Donald Trump. In New York City! In New York City, the state that has been the tip of the spear to try to destroy the man. Uh? You see that? Uh, you got to be a little bit nervous, especially when I hear that internal polling for Kamala Harris among black voters is nowhere near where they want it to be. So I'll bet that's true. That's fun, too. That is fun. And that's even with Iran helping the Biden-Harris oh, camp. It's just so much <laughs> to talk about. Stealing Trump uh, staff information and yep. giving it to him. I wonder why Iran, Pat, why would Iran want to help the Biden-Harris administration? It's an interesting question. Huh. Hmm. Iran, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Weird. That sounds is like, very uh, strange. Sounds like uh, collusion to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let me take a minute. And tell you about First Liberty. Um, You know, the radical left is now claiming that uh, we need protection from our own Constitution. They start by attacking the independence of the Supreme Court. That's what they're trying to do right now. The plan is to pack the court with handpicked justices uh, to try to get the outcomes that they want. They're only happy with the Supreme Court when when the Supreme Court makes decisions that they agree with. Otherwise, the Supreme Court needs to virtually be abolished in their mind. And right now, they're trying this Supreme Court coup. Please don't be fooled by this. It is <clears throat> nothing but a coup, and it is nothing but court packing. At first, Liberty, uh, they are trying to do something about it. They know these extremists want to dismantle the Supreme Court and the conservative majority by adding their own justices to control the outcome of the crucial cases. <clears throat> but the reality is that with a simple majority vote in Congress and the president's signature, that plan could actually happen by January. 
But we can stop it. If we unite our voices and take action right now, we can preserve the Supreme Court's independence. The future of our judiciary is in our hands. With a million patriots standing together, we can defend it. Just say no to the left's Supreme Court coup. Visit supremecoup.com slash pat, supremecoup.com slash pat, and learn how you can help safeguard our constitutional rights. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Mm-hmm. All good. Kamala was asked yesterday um, about joy, and it's an important question. I can't wait to hear how she answered. Hopefully, she didn't dodge this question. Was this a question that was oh. softball enough for her to take a swing at? Oh, she took a swing. Yeah, good. Okay. Why is joy important to you to insert into this election? And what do you make of of Republicans using that as a way to suggest that you're not a serious candidate? Oh. Well, sometimes I think, and I'll say to whoever the young people are who are watching this, there are some times when your adversaries will try and turn your strength into a weakness. Don't you let them. Don't you let them. I find joy. Wow. Find joy. In the American people. Oh, shut up. I find joy in optimism. Please stop. She finds joy in the American people and she finds joy in optimism. (laughs) Okay. Wait, what what has enchanted you the most about (laughs) this office? Yeah. What's your favorite color? I mean, these are the. These are the journalists that are supposed to be that third rail? Yeah, this is the Association of uh, Black Journalists uh, event a couple days ago. So, I mean, obviously some man. hard-hitting questions coming from Hard, there. hard-hitting. Um, so did we get a what's-your-favorite word? Did we, did we get that one in there? I hope so, because that's No, important. she dodged that one. Dodged that was that weird. One. <laughs> that was dodged as her favorite rapper. Favorite rapper that is alive. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. Matt, how would you like to face... You know, intense, difficult questions like that it's every tough. day. It's tough because I mean, you yeah. want to be, you want to have the toughest job in the world, right? right? And so, so you're, now you're being prepared for it. You're in the audition phase. You're you're in for the uh, sure the the job interview. So you're gonna get some some mm-hmm. high and tight fastballs, <laughs> like uh, like that one there. <laughs> like Holy crap! Tell us why joy is important. <laughs> yeah, look uh, at that. There okay. you go. I love this Venn diagram from uh, oh, that's Tim great. Runs his mouth. If you're, if you're listening, it's a Venn diagram because we know Kamala Harris enjoys those. She tells us all the time. So Trump is dodging bullets. <laughs> Kamala Harris is dodging interviews yeah. and every question that comes her way. That's I any love Venn kind of diagrams. Sp- yeah, you do. And then I love it. They come together with dodging those. Dodging. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. But she doesn't dodge interviews where they ask about joy. No, that's, that's no. She hit sure. that one head on. No. Good for her. She's tough. I mean, if she can handle that kind of question, she mm-hmm. can get in a room with Vladimir Putin any day. If she had been asked the really difficult question of what her favorite word is, uh, I think the answer would have been right. <laughs> because uh, that seems to be what she falls back on all the time. Eddie Scary from The Federalist wrote this interesting <laughs> uh, piece saying, other than her alarming, strained, labored, and slow speech, (laughs) by the way, what's that about? There wasn't much remarkable about Kamala Harris's 45-minute interview in front of the National Association of Black Journalists. She did do this thing that, always without fail, gives gives herself away as a stupefied and clueless about a simple answer, uh, about a simple questions answer. Right? (laughs) <laughs> that's the single word out of Kamala's mouth that lets you know she's faking her way through an issue yes. in hopes her sympathetic interviewer will help her along. And they do. They yes. always do. Giving some signal that she, he or she comprehends the absurdity drooling from <laughs> Kamala's lips. That's awesome. <laughs> At the NABJ interview, it went like this during a portion of the event related to restricting gun ownership. The interviewer asks, are there... Other solutions that you're also thinking about that will get at this issue? Kamala. Absolutely. For example, part of what we did with, so we as vice president and the, with the president, we were able to pass the first meaningful gun safety legislation in 30 years. 
And part of what that involved was millions and millions of dollars to put more mental health counselors in public schools. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're telling the story. No. Is we, it? And we've talked about how that <laughs> irritates the hell out of me. Yeah. KJP does this too, yes. right? Right. No, it's not right. So stop no. using that word. This was the uh, only moment during the interview, the entire painful slog of an interview in which Kamala got meaningful pushback from her hosts. It was pushback from the political left of the issue, to be sure, but pushback nonetheless. She struggled with it, per usual. And in the same way as always, to compensate, she says, right, in hopes of feedback, <laughs> that she hasn't lost everyone with her nonsense. Yes. A thoughtful nod or even a, hmm, yes. She went on to say, there are very few solutions that we haven't thought of. We need to put the resources into them. That's another way of saying, I don't have a real answer to that basic question, but yep. please, please, please take whatever I just said, right? Uh-huh. So true. Yeah. It's just one of her big crutches. You know, it's a big time crutch like, you know, yeah. or you know what I'm saying? You hear that all the time in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, yeah, I speak English too, just like you do. <laughs> Another one's okay. okay. I, have a, I have a doctor that says okay at the end of every single sentence. I'd like you to eat a really balanced meal, okay? Uh, I want you to do more fruits and vegetables, okay? I, everything ends in okay. Wow. It's like, uh, please stop. Please. By all that is holy, I can't take a single uh, additional okay from you today. Yeah. <laughs> like, like is another big crutch for people. That, uh, <clears throat> that, that, that little deal you were reading there from Eddie Scary reminds mm -hmm. me of a, of a tweet that Stu had yesterday, which is very similar in that one of the things that's annoying about Kamala Harris is not just word salad, it's the word salad as a delay tactic while she tries yeah. to figure out what to say. Good example from the ABC6 interview the other day. She's asked how she would speak to Trump voters. A typical mm. generic answer from a normal politician might be, well, I think Americans have more in common than what separates them, and they want a leader that will bring them together. It's not a good mm. answer, as Stu writes, but it's about what you'd expect from a politician uh, trying their very best not to say anything. That's mm -hmm. basically what Kamala eventually says, but she takes the scenic route to get there, and then he goes through the interview and just quotes her and and what she's you know going through at the time in her mind, and and as Stu rightly points out here, it's she's created a new kind of inflation, word inflation, <laughs> because she drags mm. out while her brain figures out how to lie to you in a way that you will accept. So oh, true. Oh man, she sucks. That is so true. It's like this. About the significance of the passage of time. You know, she's just stalling right? here. The significance of the. She's trying to say something profound. So when you think and about can't. it. There is great significance to the passage, passage of, of time, time in terms of what we need to do right. to lay these mm. wires, what we need to do mm -hmm. to create these jobs. Right. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. <laughs> Ooh. And we've heard that a million times, that kind of stuff from her. Uh, she just speaks in circles because she's groping for something to say that has any sort of substance. Yeah, but boy, somebody found a clip, uh, unearthed a clip uh, from back when she was a prosecutor uh, out in California, and she wasn't taking the scenic route and telling you what she thinks about your guns. Oh. You've got to see this clip. This needs to be on every Trump ad, and I want to see it during every damn football game this weekend. Clip 11, please. Responsible behaviors uh, among everybody in the community, and just because you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home doesn't mean that we're not going to walk into that home and check to see if you're being responsible and safe in the way you conduct your affairs. Wow. Holy crap. Wait, what? Yeah. You want to hear that again? Because she's talking about the safety of the community. Yeah. And then the sanctity of your home means nothing to her. Listen to this. Responsible behaviors uh, among everybody in the community. And just because you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home doesn't mean that we're not going to walk into that home oh. and check to see if you're being responsible and safe in the way you conduct your affairs. Oh, my God. Come on in. Let's go. Holy crap. Welcome to 1984. Hmm. That is a that's a threat right there. That that right there is And you know threat. that's how she still feels. She just can't oh, say it like that of anymore. She wasn't polished if you want to consider her polished now. Wow. I'm sure as I wasn't then. That I need to see that wow. clip every day everywhere by Team Trump between now and November 5th, please. Wow. It just can't happen, you know. 
we we did a uh, an off the record yesterday, and where it's where people ask questions, <clears throat> anything, any question they want, they ask of us, and uh, pretty much every time we do it, somebody asks what you know what's going to happen if she is elected, <laughs> and they asked again yesterday, and quite honestly, I don't, I really don't think we can survive it, and we mentioned that you know America is. Uh, strong enough to and too strong to be then to be brought down by one person but we've had people taking a sledgehammer to the u.s constitution and to our foundation for so long now that i'm not sure how many more blows we can take and she'd be another uh, unbelievable blow to the foundation of this country i mean listen to her listen to what she says and again she can't she can't say that now, just blatantly say, but, and, but she won't explain what, if anything, changed her mind. We've been told she doesn't have time to even address that. Hillary Clinton said yesterday she shouldn't have to address it. Cool. It's none of your business what changed her mind. Wait, what? We don't have any uh, right to ask her about her policy positions, to have her explain those positions to us? Like, if they're the polar opposite of where she stood in 2020, we can't ask her, hey, what changed your mind on this? How can we trust you that this is your position now and will continue to be your position if you're elected? We're being told we don't even have the right to know that. Sorry, that's not how it works. And it's so bad that CNN has... I mean, seemingly, I mean, they haven't turned on her, and I don't think they ever will, <laughs> but there's been some moments where I I think they question her. Uh, Dana Bash mocked her yesterday. When you listen to Kamala Harris on what she will do, you can almost um, start a drinking game every time she says small businesses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Okay. Uh, Part of my plan under my economic opportunity plan going forward mm -hmm. is that right now, startup entrepreneurs, small businesses only get a tax deduction of $5,000. Nobody can start a small business with $5,000. So I'm expanding that to $50,000. Oh, Understanding, wow. again, mm -hmm. that when people have the opportunity to have the resources to get started, yeah. they're going to put the good ideas, they're going to put the hard work into it. Mm. Describe the politics of that. <laughs> well, she says that. She also talks about being a middle-class kid. Middle That's class. also at the front of her answers. Middle if class. you look at the interviews they've been doing with local media, and they've opened up a bit more <laughs> since the debate, <laughs> the first question is often, what are you going to do to lower prices? Which is a very mm -hmm. hard question for an incumbent party to answer. Middle yeah. It has implica implications that are very Trumpian. It is, Trump says he's going to do mass deportation. That'll decrease demand. Trump says he'll explore more energy. That'll decrease energy costs. Democrats can point to the fact that inflation is actually, it was bad two years ago. It's not now. What people want to hear is how do you make the prices go down? So everything she says is something realistic that could survive a fact check that answers a very hard question. There is not a plan to say, to say that we're going to lower the cost of your grocery bill to what it was in 2019. There was a pandemic. There was a money, money, money supply inflation. You can't hit the button that makes that go away. But Trump has an answer that gets him through these questions. Right. And Harris... Mm -hmm. I think with a different set of incentives and a different relationship to something she can back up in a policy paper, she doesn't have an answer. So she goes <laughs> to a larger, mm -hmm. well, imagine a future where there are more businesses and this starts to ameliorate. Interesting. Yeah. That's CNN. Yeah. She has kind of answered the question, though, about how she brings prices down, and that's price controls. It's, well, yeah, that, that's to follow the Karl Marx plan. Went over like a lead balloon. So now yeah. her answer is, well, I grew up a middle class kid the hell are you talking yeah. about what does that have and to do keeps with repeating it and wait till you see who else is on board with that line now a you oh. didn't grow up a middle class kid. <laughs> right <laughs> Jeez. and by the way to that guy's point about donald trump talking about mass <clears throat> deportation and stuff you even have <clears throat> uh, yesterday um fed chair jerome powell blaming the influx of these illegal immigrants as re we've shown the charts <clears throat> where <clears throat> americans are losing their jobs and immigrants are gaining in jobs, and the unemployment rate is because of that influx taking those jobs. Oh. 888 More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. Got a few 
few tweets here. Uh, Oliver Klusoff tweets, These electronic device explosions give new meaning to hands-free calling. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> bum I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> to Hands-free. Hands-free calling. Yeah. Uh, model man Frank tweets, This is what happens when you buy Chinese products. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the pickled squirrel. I find joy in repeating myself ad nauseum and cackling oh, wildly. You're qualified yeah, to be a Democrat a nominee for president, good too. Good sentence for uh, Kamala there. Uh, we are joined this morning by Glenn Beck. Oh, I know this uh, guy. Glenn, welcome. Uh, hello, Pat. Thank you so much. <laughs> We've got uh, we got a cool event coming up. It's does It, start, it starts tomorrow, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it starts tomorrow. Uh, I think, I, I don't know exactly. There's a lot of rules to the art world I didn't know. Oh. Mm. So I think tomorrow is a preview. Okay. Uh, and I think those tickets are sold out. And then Saturday from 9 to 3, 9 to 5, mm-hmm. public mm-hmm. can come in. Tickets are still available for that. I think, I'm not sure, but I thought it was sold out on the VIP. I think there are about 20 tickets left for VIP. And what does that include? Uh, that you includes, take them around? Uh, it's, that one is, I think, breakfast with me and uh, then I take you around on a tour and oh and that'd be fun but, yeah yeah but and explain is, all the paintings and there's as some much just, as i can all the artists are going to be here they arrive oh. tonight i think okay uh and i mean th- these are some of the best artists have you walked through yeah, the halls of them? So it's beautiful cool. i mean there's the one right outside so cool here things. of your studio blackshear is yeah. one of the one of the best artists in the country yeah um and my gosh he took this thing Dead. I mean, he really <laughs> hit it. He, oh, cool. you know, he took the Ten Commandments from the vault. Oh, yeah, really. And cool. Moses looks like Moses. Right. I mean, it, it's right. It's incredible. Yeah. And his um, Lincoln Memorial painting is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it, it's just great. Yeah. The, the artwork is spectacular. And I'm not even an art fan, and I love the stuff that's hanging out here. But mm-hmm. in addition to just the paintings. It's really been turned into a mini um, uh, museum. A museum for yeah. history out there with different yeah. stuff on display. Yeah, there, we we got some other stuff coming out too. To, uh, mm. Come out uh, tomorrow, but it is it's it's. I think it should go on tour myself. It is uh, the best mix of American history, actual artifacts, and then storytelling through art. Mm-hmm. And my goal is if this can be successful, um, you know, with rich people buying it. Uh, what I hope is it will take the most popular. We'll see because people who come through, they'll vote on which one they think really moved them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then hopefully uh, we can get these into prints and posters and people can hang them on their walls. Cause nice. It, it's nice. It's nice to have, you know, yeah. a rich person own one piece of art, but it's so much better to have the mass have it hanging in their home. Yeah. Agreed. So they are selling these works all of them are for sale all of them for sale all of them are for sale this weekend and And then there are the originals still tickets available for nine to three on saturday yeah and those are 25 bucks and it's so that's not bad at all yeah no it's so worth coming yeah it's beautiful it's really incredible if you're anywhere near the dallas area even if you're not it's worth it's worth the trip yeah people come i mean to my art show people have come from i mean i had a couple of people come from europe for my art show Wow. This, this one is wow. spe- mine's at the beginning. I say that, you know, there are 30 Ameri- great American artists. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's 29 and me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and my stuff, appropriately, is right at the beginning. So you can go, oh, yeah. that's good. That's and cute. then you turn the corner and you're like, no, that wasn't. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't so good. <laughs> I think your stuff holds up really well. Sure. It's, it's well, beautiful. Yeah, thank it's you. it's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I know you spend a lot of time on, on these paintings. Yeah, the the Wallenberg. Show us this year. one. Um, maybe I don't know if we this can one. get a shot of that from where it is, but if this one I just, yeah, okay. This one I just finished. Uh, this one is. I'm doing a series of. Oh, I call awesome. them just a series yeah, of Americans. Uh, and uh, and is this a specific Native American or just this a generic one's not? This is Native based American. on an old photo uh, that I found from the 1800s hmm. and just generic Indian chief. But I just thought it was. I just think it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yes, so, it is. Um, I don't know if this Very one is cool. going to make it in the art show. <laughs> there's oh. two. Yeah, there's two. There's American number two. Uh, this is American number three. And I don't know if they're going to be. 
even in the art show. But mm. okay, anyway. okay, we just uh, tweeted out that link uh, if you would like to uh, get, still tickets. get tickets. You come, and I'm going to be here mm-hmm. all weekend. So I'd love to meet everybody and mm. and see it. And all the artists are going to be explaining. Plus, the museum people are here for Mercury. Can you do that too? Uh, do what? Uh, the museum tour. Museum's closed this weekend. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, you can you can come and uh, see this stuff, and they're going to be the some of the docents are going to be there to talk about you know Mary Todd Lincoln's dress. Mm-hmm. What the, what the cool thing is is you'll see the Emancipation Proclamation right next to Blackshear's <laughs> painting of the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, you'll see uh, like mine is Wallenberg, who Ra- Raoul Wallenberg is one of my heroes. He saved 100,000 Jews in uh, the war. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, I have him painted at the train station where he saved a lot of them. And next to it is the Schutz Pass, which all of them are holding in their hands. Mm. He handed Mm. out these fake documents that said, you're now a Swedish citizen. Oh, right. And he would save people like that, give them fake documents, and then give them out, get them out. Uh, and so you have that painting next to the actual, an actual Schutz pass. Schutz pass. Okay. Um, and a lot of the art is, is like that. A lot of the art has the actual artifact of the story that they're telling. That's really the cool. The one of, uh, have you seen, um, uh, Austin, uh, what's his first name? Sa- um, Sam Austin? No, uh, from, oh. from, from Texas. Um, oh. Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin. Austin. Thank you. God, <laughs> I couldn't think of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stephen F. Austin. The actual original document that started Texas, okay, that says, and I love this document, says the conditions that Mexico gave us to be able to start a community of Texas. And it's in his own handwriting. And it's going to be... That's cool. Oh, it's unbelievable. We're displaying that? Yeah, we're displaying that. Oh, very cool. I love that. That's sitting next to... Have you seen that beautiful painting of... The guy on the horse with the blue be- bonnets, and he's got the oh yeah the r- r- scroll on the horse. Yes, that's Stephen F. Austin. Oh, cool! Oh, nice. And on his way into Texas for the first time, and it cool. is from it's wow. from Album Veselka, uh, uh, and it is it's stunningly beautiful. So don't miss this. Yeah, uh, if you can possibly be here, highly recommend it. Uh, if you're a Hezbollah terrorist, please leave your pager outside <laughs> right. uh, and your the building. Yeah, and your walkie-talkie. Yeah, and your And really any and electronics. Radio, I'm going to say any electronics anything. for you. Anything yeah. you could charge or yeah. plug in, please yeah. leave it outside they're gonna the be, building. Uh, they're going to be Amish quickly. <laughs> 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 Can you believe uh, what they've been able to accomplish? Yes. The Israelis? Oh, I just... Yes. It's, it's astounding. I'm, I'm so excited. I, I was invited to... I've been trying to get an interview with Benjamin Netanyahu for a while now, and he just is not doing any. Oh. Um, and he invited me to go up to the United Nations. He's giving a speech, and also what's happening in the United Nations next week. <clears throat> I hope you guys are on. It's terrifying. The one world government is up for endorsement by the United Nations next week My in gosh. three parts. Um, so I hope to go up to the United Nations next week and meet with him, but I'd, l- I, I can't wait to hear if he will tell me some of the things that, uh, yeah, they've done. I mean, I can't wait to see the movies that are based on this. Oh my gosh. It's... Don't screw with the Israelis. Right. Man. Don't screw <laughs> no. with them. I They're mean, serious you know, people. when you have 19 times the world tries to wipe you out, Yeah, you know, you get a little clever. You do. <laughs> you get a little clever. You kind of have to be. I was talking to the, uh, former spokesman of the IDF yesterday and I said, uh, uh, I said, we don't need to fight your wars. And he's like, we don't want you to fight our wars. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> I know. I know. We don't need us. We're way too politically correct to oh fight their my wars. Gosh. And you know what's crazy about that? So wait a minute. I can't drop a bomb. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. But I also can't target an individual in Hezbollah. Right. Wait. What? So what can I do? It doesn't <laughs> get any more targeted than, than that. What has just happened? Yep. You and couldn't have, you didn't have, the reason why people were carrying around these beepers from like, like they were doctors from the 1980s <laughs> is, is because they knew the Israelis had everything else right. tracked. Yes. And so yes. if you, only if you were not trying to be tracked by the Israelis and Hezbollah ordered the, do you know that they took that and they got it at the factory? Somehow or another, the Mossad found out that wow. they had put in a giant order, that Hezbollah right. had put a giant order in, 5,000 of yep. them. Yep. They somehow or another intercepted them, 
without anyone knowing, mm-hmm. made changes to them, right. put them back on the flight without <laughs> anybody knowing. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's the opening scene of a movie. It is. Yeah. It's incredible. It is. It's incredible. I can't wait to watch it unfold because I. it is one of the most spectacular pieces of intelligence and uh, defense in world history. Yeah. It's incredible. I tell you, uh, I tell you, the um, I was on the phone with somebody yesterday uh, who is uh, a techie, and he said I have to talk to you about something. And I said, "Well, I got, I have time." And he's like, "No, not on, not on the phone." I said, "Well, oh. I have a, I have an up phone, which is probably the most secure phone in the in the world." And he's like, "No, no, we're we're talking. I, I want to talk to you about some things that are going on with the government." And I said, "Oh." I need to see you in person <laughs> to do that. There's, he said, there is no electronic wow. device that our government cannot get into. And he said, uh, you know, Glenn, please, you don't think they're monitoring everything you have? I mean, they're they're to the point where, you know, if you're a bad guy, they're going to be listening through your toaster soon. <laughs> <laughs> or they might already be. Yeah, they might already be. They might already be. a smart be. toaster. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it. Uh, we'll be listening for you uh, later on this morning on the Glenn Beck program. Uh, we've been conditioned to think that the only way to grow our retirement savings is by risking it all in the stock market, but that's just not the case. You can achieve your financial goals without unnecessary risks. Think about it. Uh, if you have a 401k or an IRA, um, who really controls your money? The government decides how much money you can take out, when you have to pay for it, pay it back, and you'll face taxes and penalties for accessing your own money too early or too late. With our skyrocketing national debt, who knows how high taxes will be in the future. The good news is there's a proven alternative, and it's called bank on yourself. This strategy lets you bypass Wall Street, and it puts you back in control. It offers guaranteed predictable growth without worrying about the market crashes. Uh, Your savings grow tax-free, and you'll know your tax rate in retirement. Zero under current tax law. Plus, you can access your money anytime you want for any reason with no penalties. Famous businesses like McDonald's have used this strategy for years, and you can too. Get a free report on how Bank on Yourself works by going to bankonyourself.com slash unleashed. You'll love this. It's never had a down year is in like 160 years. Bankonyourself.com slash unleashed. Pat Gray Unleashed. Hey, the Teamsters have decided that uh, they're not going to endorse anybody. Wow. When's the last Mm. time this happened? It's It's been over 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think what they did was they had the rank and file vote, and they realized, oh, geez, our people want Donald Trump to win. Um, (laughs) hmm. So they're going to be pissed at us if uh, we endorse Kamala Harris. So we're not going to endorse anybody. (laughs) Ta-da. Good stuff. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, look at the summer vote. Put put that graphic up there. So check that out. Biden was barely beating Trump this summer. Yeah. Among the Teamsters. Okay, it was 44-36. And now, <laughs> now it's 58-31 for Trump. Wow. How's that switching out Biden for Harris working with the union vote? Wow, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That 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 speaks volumes. Sure does. They have no interest in Kamala Harris. And they shouldn't. No. They they really shouldn't. Uh so they've decided, yeah, you know what? Uh we're just not gonna we're gonna stay out of politics this year. <laughs> stay out of politics this year. <laughs> that's not yeah, a good sign good. right there. No, that's not a good sign. I love it. Uh but I I really love that. I mean, nobody has been more in the bag for Democrats. Yep. Over the last hundred years, than unions, yeah, and especially Teamsters. And meanwhile, what has happened to your country, yeah. union members? Yeah, and that's what the Teamsters rank and file understands. They've seen what's happened under Democrat control, and they're tired of it. They don't want it anymore. Uh, they're ready to flush that down the toilet. And so, at least the 
uh, the leadership at the Teamsters Union realized, eh, we don't want to go against all our members. Uh, to their credit, that's that's amazing. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. And again, that hasn't happened in 30 years. So <laughs> pretty amazing. So cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, and, you know, it's uh, it's hot outside. Yeah, still. In Texas, what was it, 95, 96 yes, yesterday? Yes, 95. Uh, the highest. 95, uh, 95, 95. 95. Now, Every I, day, 95, 95. It works. The Fetterman <laughs> thing works. Uh, but next week, I guess we're going to drop yeah. into the 80s finally. Yes, we are. Which <laughs> nice. Yeah, freezing cold. But uh, your bedroom temperature plays a huge role in how you feel and how you sleep every night. Uh, do you have good sleep quality or bad sleep quality? Do you wake up too hot or too cold? Let me recommend checking out Miracle Maid's bed sheets inspired by NASA. They use silver-infused fabrics that are temperature regulating so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. That's a huge factor in how I sleep. Traditional sleep uh, sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat. <laughs> it's a nasty fact, isn't it? Gives you all kinds of problems. Um, but these miracle made sheets are self cleaning, they're antibacterial, and they prevent 99.7% of bacterial growth. Uh, so you'll need to do about a third of the laundry that you do now. Miracle made sheets offer self cooling properties for better quality sleep, plus, they stay cleaner and fresher longer. Awesome. These are incredibly comfortable, too. They're they're like the five-star hotel sheets that are so soft and comfortable, but at a fraction of the price. Stop sleeping on bacteria, please. <laughs> Head to trymiracle.com slash pat and order yours today. Save over 40%. Use the promo code pat, and you'll get another 20% off. And three free towels. Miracle offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So... Go to TryMiracle.com slash Pat. That's TryMiracle.com slash Pat. Treat yourself today. Oh, this is is uh, exciting. We've been talking about uh, Kamala and how brilliant her speech patterns are. Oh, that's are. a fact. Uh, she's also unveiled a new accent. <laughs> what is this, the fourth or fifth accent of the no, campaign sir. season? <laughs> Love it. Uh, we'll share that with you coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here Mm -hmm. on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, and we got some tweets. Uh, You don't want to miss Kamala's new accent, though. It's fabulous, and uh, we'll share that with you in a second. But uh, as far as the Israeli thing, where they uh, intercepted the shipment of of pagers and, I guess, walkie-talkies as well. Uh, I'm not sure how they did this, but um, they got to the manufacturer. They (laughs) planted the explosives in them and then put them back without anybody knowing. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, Biggin750 says, uh, this is literally the plot for Ocean's 12. They fixed the dice at the plant with their own people. Okay, mm. so I haven't seen that. Thanks for ruining mm. it for me. Mm. How long has it been out? Not 40 years. Yeah. So, so let's kind of yeah. pull back You're, you're in that window. Oh, wow. Mm. From Tamara B, Kamala Harris's values haven't changed. She just lies about them and flip-flops. She will... Try to grab your guns. She will ban fracking. She will raise your taxes. Yes. Yes to all of those things. If she's allowed the opportunity, which I hope she won't be. Uh, Kenneth Grise or Grease. Remember, we need to pass the bill before we know what's in it. (laughs) Yeah, that's what uh, Nancy Pelosi said. Well, I guess we need to elect Kamala before we get to know Kamala. Mm, Makes sense. (laughs) From Patrick Hill, Glenn Beck's definitely got some artistic talent, but he's no Hunter Biden. Oh, yeah. Really That's strong true. point there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So let's not forget that. Uh, none of his paintings are going for $750,000 like Hunter's. Well, so. I mean, if Glenn could uh, help arrange a meeting with the President of the United States. Yeah, maybe then. then maybe you maybe could then. sell mm-hmm. him for that price. 
Uh, all right, so Kamala broke out a new fake yeah. Hispanic accent. She's at the Hispanic Caucus yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, listen to the, her okay. opening line. Um, I love you back. I love you back. I, love you back. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's just her goofy way or if that's a, a, an accent. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, <sighs> I love you back. I love you back. I guess so, yeah. I mean, she's so fraudulent. She's so fake that everything she does is irritating to me. That's, everything. Yes, yes. Here she is on mass deportation. And now they have pledged to carry out the largest deportation, a mass deportation, mm -hmm. in American so, history. Good. We Imagine need it. what that would look like and what that would be. Oh, What would it look like and what would it be? Hang on, I'm imagining it. Okay, I'm thinking, uh, yes, that's that's a good thing for America. Yes. Good, I yes. I want this, yes. <laughs> yes, Please. I am imagining. I like it. And here she is talking to Hispanics about that, thinking mm -hmm. that they agree with her on this issue, and I'll bet most of them don't. Right. It, I if, grew up understanding the children of the community are the children of the community. Wait. What? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, what? I, I don't know. Play I, that for me again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she grew up thinking... That you, play it one more time. Yeah. I grew up understanding yeah. the children of the community are the children of the community. Did you get that? So she grew up... Most people didn't know that the yeah. children of the community were the children of the community? What they think the children of the community were? The children of some other community? I, I really, I don't. Please, no, <laughs> no follow-ups. Are Pat. you talking about? Well, she's done that line before. Wow. The children of the community done that line before and go. Uh, hmm. You know, when we talk about our children, I know for this group, we all believe that when we talk about the children of the community, yeah, they are a children of the community. Oh, she mixed no, it she up. No, she likes it. Yeah, she mixed it up. So the, the first time it was the children of the community are the children of the community. That old classic Kamala clip is the children of the community are a children of the community. I grew up understanding mm -hmm. the children of the community are the children of the community. Okay. You know, when we talk about our children, I know for this group, we yeah. all believe that when we talk about the children of the community, they are a children of the community. See, now, now they're yeah. just a children. I mean, she... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I mean, I don't care if she was a libertarian who wanted to eliminate mm. income taxes. Mm. I could not live through four years of listening to this woman talk. <laughs> I can't. I just cannot do it. Oh, man. I, 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 how do you think that that's a good line <laughs> to the point where you repeat it again when you have the opportunity to pander in, in front of an audience that you think is going to be friendly to the children of community line? <laughs> I, that's really amazing. Really <laughs> astounding. All right. Let me take a minute to tell you about real estate agents I trust. Um, picture this. You're about to make one of the biggest final financial decisions of your life, buying or selling your home. It's stressful, right? As Kamala would ask, right? Now imagine <laughs> having not just any help, but the best help available. I'll tell you, it makes a huge difference. For the first time, we had a really good realtor this time, and she sold her house within a week. And she advised us on all the changes we should make or changes we should not make because we wouldn't get our money out of it anyway. And it worked out so well. I mean, I highly recommend going to Real Estate Agents I Trust. They pair you with a top-tier real estate agent in your area. And these aren't just any agents. They are the agents who know the market inside and out. They understand the best practices and lead with expertise. They've got great marketing plans. They have great results. They've got a great track record. If you're thinking about buying or selling or doing both, now's the time to reach out. Realestateagentsitrust.com. They live up to their name. Realestateagentsitrust.com to get started and experience a difference for yourself. It's a free service that we provide to you. We just set you up with a great realtor, and then the rest is up to you and your agent. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Is unleashed. All right. 
Uh, this team is so fabulous. You got we we've had all the hair, Kamala Harris stuff, and now we get to hear the genius that is. Oh, uh, tampon Tim Walls. Tampon Tim. Timmy Tom. Timmy. Tampon Tim. Uh, he was asked about inflation. Okay. There's what he had to say. Yeah. Let's start with inflation. What do you tell people who wake up, frankly, each morning wondering, how am I going to get by financially? Yeah, I tell them, Kamala yeah. Harrison, I know something about it, being middle class folks. Our family sit at the table trying to pay the bill. Oh, my gosh. What is it? Wait. Everything. What does that have to do with anything? Everything is middle class. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they think that's a winning line. I swear. That people identify, oh, yeah, okay, he's middle class. I'm middle class. So I'm going to vote for them. It doesn't matter what the question Weird. is. They it doesn't. Will, they will answer it. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, we know class. what it's like because we come from middle class families sure. too. Sure. <laughs> wow. Uh, How can America fall for this crap? I hope. I hope we don't. Please, um, please, please. Clearly, some people have been taken in by it, but I can't believe the majority will be. If the majority of this country is taken in by it, then we're done anyway. So. We probably deserve our destruction. If we're this stupid that the majority can buy into this garbage, then, you know, I guess you got it coming to you. <laughs> okay. Man. Oh. It was so frustrating. Yes, it is. It's so frustrating. They should have no more than, I don't know, 2% support. I just saw the approval rating, which is is down for Kamala, and it's up for Trump. His favorability rating is up. I think it was five percent overall, um, but hers had come down a little bit. I just don't know how it's above one. How do you have more than one percent favorability? Nearly identical percentages of U.S. adults rate Donald Trump and Kamala Harris favorably. Forty-six percent for for Donald Trump. 44% for him for Kamala Harris. Hmm. Wow. Both candidates, however, have higher unfavorable ratings than favorable. Trump's favorable rating is seven percentage points higher than his favorable score. Harris's 10%. Um her bump in favorability after the unexpected nomination as Democratic presidential nominee. So meaning before she was the nominee. She was very, very unfavorable. And I think like 28% or something. So it's gone up quite a bit since then. While Trump's favorability is up five points since last month alone, returning to the level he was at in June. And will this latest assassination attempt bump him up even further? I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, despite the overall negative tilt in favorability, both candidates enjoy nearly unanimous positive ratings from their own party faithful and negligible positivity from the opposing party. While majorities of independents view Trump and Harris unfavorably, the former president holds a favorability edge over the vice president, 44 to 35, among independents. So there's some hope there. Yeah, yeah. There's some hope. That That is, um, yeah, I saw that as well. It's a big uh, uh, independent uh, uh, going for Trump at this point. So yeah. I really like to see that. Bit of a boost. Yeah. And then uh, apparently uh, Team Trump has already taken a hold of that Kamala clip and done a little magic with it, if you want to oh, have they? see this ad they made. We All right. got this in. Yeah. Now they have pledged to carry out the largest deportation, a mass deportation, in American history. Mm. Imagine what that would look like and what that would be. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. <laughs> I'm a fan. Uh, me too. <laughs> That's is that something we just threw together though? No, no, that's an actual. I don't know who. That's not threw an actual ad, right? Uh, it's not coming from Trump. We got to get you on social media, man. I mean, well, that, that's what that, I'm saying though. That's what I'm saying like that. Somebody puts that together and then it's spread to the masses from yes, all those. Yes, I understand Trump, that. You know? I just wanted to be clear that's not actually coming from Trump. I don't know. Is it? it this one actually might be bad. I don't know <laughs> for sure. It would be good if it were. Uh, there's been similar ads like that sent out by Team Trump, so that's why I wouldn't put it past them to be the ones that actually threw that together. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Really fun. Uh, all right. I guess Trump has vowed that he's going to go to Springfield, Ohio in the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So 
Hopefully he'll find out the truth when he's there. Is it is it really happening? Is it not happening? What is going on in Springfield, Ohio? Apparently shoplifting and vehicle theft have both risen in Springfield, Ohio. Now, people will yell and scream that oh, there was there was crime before before all the migrants got there. Right, right. But an influx like this just amplifies the situation that doesn't need to be amplified. Hmm. So... Are we allowed to talk about the spike in car insurance rates among Springfield, Ohio residents since the Haitians have landed there? Uh, They've gone up uh, astronomical. And in Hmm. fact, just yesterday, a a Haitian migrant uh, flipped a vehicle containing her, her four-year-old child, and their infant... Uh, just in the middle of the road there, so that, that mm. was, that's Jeez. good. That's a day in the life. But basically, you're now a high risk driver if you live in Springfield, Ohio, and thus car insurance rates have gone up because it, of it that. affects so many aspects sure of life. Sure does negatively. Um, and again, it's not. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're black or red or purple. It doesn't matter. You can't have this kind of influx of people from somewhere else. That just change everything. From 2021 to 23, Springfield has seen a 51.5% jump in uh, motor vehicle theft reports and a 112.8%, so a 113% spike in shoplifting. Huh. Hmm. I'm sure that's racism too, right? <laughs> you can't, you, because yes, the numbers don't lie. But you shouldn't point them out. I guess you're supposed to just shut up about it. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Move along. You know, every year we all promise uh, to save more and spend less. But how are you supposed to save when you're paying inflated prices for gas and groceries? Uh, You can't cut those out of your budget. That's why I love my 2023 money-saving hack. It's called Upside. Upside is an amazing app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I get cash back on every single purchase. It's my secret weapon for staying on track uh, with my savings goals. Those inflated prices uh, don't matter quite as much when you get cash back on the essentials you're already buying anyway. It's really easy to use. You just download the free app. You claim an offer. You pay as usual with your credit or debit card. And you get paid from Upside. Use it all the time at the gas pump and get the cash back. It adds up really fast. Plus, Upside doesn't sell your personal information to third parties. They know that your information is a vital part of their trusted relationship with you. Upside users are earning hundreds of dollars a year, and that's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app today and use my promo code UNLEASHED to get an extra 25 cents back for every single gallon of gas on your first tank of gas. Uh, It's just going to be incredible gas savings. So, again, uh, just download the app. And start using it to save money. Pat Gray Unleashed. Missed an episode? Catch up anytime, anywhere podcasts are found. Pat Gray will be right back. Got some tweets here. Sons of Thunder 44 tweets, Kamala is as fake as Joy Reid's hair color. (laughs) Dr. Free Range Prisoner. I've been a Teamster for 23 years now, and this is the first time I've ever even been asked who I want to support for POTUS. Then they ignore the majority of us. Oh, Clowns. Clowns. (laughs) Uh, Conservatarians. Children of the community is just a communism (laughs) retread of It Takes a Village. Sure is. Mm -hmm. The USA is a republic, tweets... I grew up understanding that the children of communists and socialists are communists and socialists. Yeah, I understand that as well. Uh, Johnny Ringo, you know what I find amazing is that Kamala Harris seems to know more about Donald Trump's policies than she does her own. 
Uh, absolutely. And Ars Nedden, I swear the word folks needs to be retired forever. Thanks, Obama and all Dems. Middle class folks, even worse. Yeah, I, I hate that word as well. Uh, all right. 888 <laughs> Pat Unleashed on Twitter. We got this from uh, Anna Polina Luna. Anna Polina Luna. I'm just a bird in the sky. <laughs> I, I, can yeah, you? D- yeah. Do you know the song well enough to uh, no. it hits you that way every time? It does no, not. It does not. Uh, <laughs> I, I Sorry wish, to say that. I wish it didn't hit me that way. Yeah. Yeah. So she tweeted out something pretty important yesterday. My yeah. office has received a very serious shooting threat. This division of division and hate campaign against Republicans is going to get someone killed. Well, it already has. It already has. Uh, I will not be threatened, intimidated, or bow down to those using violence as a means to push their agenda. We will win. America is the greatest country in the world. I will continue to fight for the wonderful people who have elected me, as well as those across the country that feel that they are being left behind. Please keep my family in your prayers. Hate has no place here. Uh, So, yeah, a serious threat to Anna Polina. I guess both at her office and her home have been threatened. Really not good. No. Uh, And there are some, even on the Democratic side, who are a bit concerned about what's going on, who are a bit concerned that there have been not one, but two attempts on the life of Donald Trump already. And one of the surprising sources of concern is Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut. Guy's a total and complete buffoon. (laughs) (laughs) But... He's been really good on this. Regarding the assassination attempts on Donald Trump, um, he said he will not stop going after the impeached, my word, not his, the impeached Alejandro Mayorkas and the Department of Homeland Security. Here he is talking about it. I am reaching the point of total outrage. Good. Because the Good. response from the Department of Homeland Security has been totally lacking. In fact, I think right. it's tantamount to stonewalling in many respects. If necessary, I'll certainly support a subpoena. Wow. Man. How now, about that? Yeah, now you know what Republicans feel like when dealing with Mayorkas and the DHS. Richard? Yeah, for sure. But yeah. I, I mean, it is but shocking, but thank you. Shocking. I know. For caring. Yeah. Yeah, everybody should be up in arms like that. Everybody, certainly in Congress, how how are you not concerned about not one but two attempts on the life, and they've both been so blatant and so easily avoided? You know, the first one, the guy, the guy could still be alive himself had they just arrested him prior to the shooting, and sadly, nobody did anything about it, and. The Secret Service doesn't want to tell us why or how any of that happened. And then the golf incident, I mean, we'll probably never find out what the deal is there either. How do you how do you allow him to get close enough to even point the gun at the former president oh, on the golf course? Wait, do we have pictures? Uh, Chris, I know you sent in some pictures. I don't see them here. Uh, oh, Sniper's Nest, yeah. New York Post has some great pictures from... Uh... The sniper's nest there. Yeah, they got some insight of how it would look and yeah, the keep, let's keep. yeah, you keep rolling through them mm-hmm. and the actual perspective of what okay the shooter would have been looking at. Oh, if, he littered, right? The, li- the lib should be upset about that. Yeah, the, that's the not litter. good. Yeah, yeah, and, the and environment. As we go through these, uh, how were they using a telephoto lens um, to to take the picture? I'm waiting for the one that shows the green uh, because that looked much closer than three to five hundred yards. Um, and this little area right, right, right here. here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh look at that. That's perfect. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. And then think about it. The Secret Service saw wow. a mm. barrel through all that shrub. Yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's, that's amazing. And I, amazing. And I sincerely appreciate that. Me too. Oh, yes, absolutely. But I've heard that this mm-hmm. area um, along the shrubs there at the road has been an area of concern for a while. Yes. yes. So... Yeah, Shouldn't they said you, for years. Could you not have somebody there 
just even while Trump is on that hole. And not just that. They didn't do a perimeter walk. Also, that came out. They were like just yeah. there. But yeah. his mugshot got released yesterday. Are you guys ready for that mugshot? Okay. That smirky yeah. bastard. Mm-hmm. Look at that smirk. Ugh. What a gross. Ugh. What a douchebag. Yeah. Totally. Wow. <laughs> uh, very strange. Very strange. He's proud of himself. Oh, he is. Well, yeah, he was smiling when they arrested when him. When they arrested him, too. Yep. It's like, yeah, yeah, look what I did. <laughs> yeah, it's me. History so. will be talked about me. <laughs> uh-huh. That's why I don't like to say his name. Yeah. And I refuse to say the names of the school shooters. Same. Um, and so I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna publicize his name. Um, although I think we've said it a time or two, but I don't like to do that. Uh so hopefully he'll rot in jail the rest of his life, but you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. But which one? Is he not going to make it or is no, he going to be let free? Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be let free. Mm. He might do some time in jail, but it, I don't think it'll be a lengthy stretch. Uh you know, those those lengthy stretches, those are reserved for the J6 Polarators and Millers, the people who milled and paraded around the Capitol building. Uh, as it should be. I mean, Thank you, know, you they should p- pay a very, very so stiff price. So about time we put that felon about Steve time. Baker. Yeah. Still walking the streets. Still. I saw him walking around this building yesterday. You did wow. Scared the crap out of me. Are you serious? Me. Yeah. Was he in shackles? Yeah. No. Wow. No. Scott free. It's Completely unrestricted. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not, it's not right. Uh, more coming up. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Triple Eight Nine Hundred Thirty Three Ninety Three. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, so, Speaker Johnson's government funding plan was defeated in the House yesterday, <laughs> mm, yeah. which means that uh, we're facing another government shutdown Shoot. by the end of the month. Oh, how are we going to cope? I don't know. Without the government? Yeah. You can't. You can't cope. Yeah, so we've got to avoid it at all costs. <laughs> I mean, this is what we played in overtime a couple weeks back. Thomas Massey explained why he wasn't going to vote for this. Yeah, I mean, so good. The deal was, where's so our good. 12 individual spending bills for each department? Mm-hmm. So you give me those, you can play games with the SAVE Act all you want. And so, therefore, people like Thomas Massey voted against it yesterday. Uh, Shut it down! Good Let's for go. him. Yeah. What are we, like, seven, eight, nine? I don't know, a week and a half away? It's only 200 and... And we, but the thing hours. is, we only face it 10 or 11 times a year. Yeah. That's the do? good thing, you know? It's not excessive, and it's it's not silly that they haven't passed a budget since 2009. That's all fine. That's all fine, because mm-hmm. it's working out really well. We're only $36 trillion in debt, and it only goes <laughs> up. It only goes up a trillion dollars every 100 days. It doesn't go up a trillion a day. Wow, well, listen to you. One one hundredth of that. So you want Putin to win in Ukraine. That's what <laughs> I heard. You. That's exa- I mean, that's all I heard. <laughs> And as a new American, Pat, is there like a date that they know that this has to pass? <laughs> yeah. or, does it, there, or does it go like, oh is, my gosh, Chris. that's tomorrow. Yeah, in Puerto Rico, there's no, there's no, there's no date. You don't no, have calendars. No date. But here in we America... We don't have calendars. The, Thank you. Yeah. We don't have calendars. We do have calendars here. And it tells we don't you, have maps, but we do have calendars. And it tells you, hey, this is the day that your government yeah. will shut down if you don't have a money pass. Yeah, the fiscal right. year ends every Got year. Got it. Yeah. End of September. It mm-hmm. starts October 1st. Yeah. And that means that if they don't get this figured out in Congress, the government will shut mm. down in 279 hours, 21 minutes and 33 seconds mark. But who's counting? And of course, if the government shuts down, uh, dogs and cats... Go crazy. I heard veterans, uh, they die in the street because they can't die in the access streets. anything. All, all people die in the oh, streets. Oh, they all die. Yeah, yeah. We all lose our homes. 
We all go out in the street and just drop dead. Don't let There's going to be wow. piles of dead bodies everywhere. Hold it's on. really unpleasant. That, but don't you, don't, you don't you don't want it to happen. Don't let those dead pets go to waste though. You can <laughs> True. get those overnighted to uh, Springfield. It'll, Springfield. Yeah, it'll give the Haitians something to eat. There mm-hmm. you go. So that's good. You got that going for you. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Let it Shut down. Please oh, yeah. Let it shut down. Please. It's happened in the past. We made it through just fine. All the necessary mandatory stuff still happens. The government shutdown doesn't mean you're going to lose your Social Security or Medicare be- benefits. That still happens. All of that kind of stuff does. Uh, so it's nothing to fear, really. It just means that they're not going to be screwing things over for a few days <laughs> or a week. Or a month. What was it? The, the last shutdown they actually experienced was was that thirty days? If I remember, it was it, it was a while, and we somehow survived it. I don't know how it's did possible. We know, Pat? Mm, did we, we? Did. we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> there were not there were not piles of dead bodies in the street. Um, so I think that shocked a but lot. I of couldn't people. go to a national museum or a national park, Pat Gray. All right. Right. Did that mess up your plans? Like, it sure you, did. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, if you can't go to a national park on any given day, uh, how do you how do you make it through? How's this America? <laughs> it isn't. It just isn't. Uh, so, uh, Trump was in New York yesterday. We got a couple of uh, clips of that. For some reason, he went into a bar and oh, made a Bitcoin this. purchase. Yeah, and I appreciated this uh, being done publicly. <laughs> Uh, he's making the uh, Bitcoin purchase there. Look at that, huh? I don't, did he buy rounds for everyone at the bar? Is that what he did? I have no idea. But this was. And fantastic, it went through. Yay! <laughs> and just like that, all of our Bitcoin spiked. I wish Trump would make oh. a public Bitcoin purchase every day from now to eternity. What's it up to now? Oh gosh, what are we at? 62,000 now? 62. All right, we're done. Perfect. The Yay! first transaction by a president 63. on the Bitcoin protocol. Nice. History. <laughs> History. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I got to go back and see those people. Let's go. Come on. Right this way. Man of the people. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Somebody, somebody. Some interest rates today. What's your thought on interest rates? Because it shows the economy is very bad to cut it by that much. Uh, assuming they're not just playing politics, the uh, economy would be very bad, or they're playing politics, one or the other. But it was a big cut. Wow. Wait a minute. I'm so disappointed in Donald Trump for not saying, look, I grew up in a middle class family. Because <laughs> he didn't. He was <laughs> given free money. <laughs> right. Thank you for going right. to the next well, step he, for he me. He got a small loan from his he dad sure to get started. Of just a million dollars. Exactly. I mean, who among us hasn't received that small, that tiny little loan, a little boost from your family? Hmm. Who among us? I don't know. <laughs> Did you, Pat? No. Oh, you did it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought no. you were like saying like. I didn't. Hey, I wish me. I would have. Oh, but okay. no, no small little million dollar loan for my dad. Yeah, you could just be like my dad and get married 88 days before you die and let your deathbed bride walk away with everything. But I'm just. <laughs> but you're not bitter. Not that's bitter. the good thing. Oh wow. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's out of the blue. <laughs> Every once in a while, you get a glimpse into oh, the Keith past. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you okay there, buddy? <laughs> He's actually not. No, he's not. Never going to let that go. That was awesome. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, bye-bye, childhood uh, home. Boy. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. Only child got jack squat. Anyway, continue, please, with the show. Mm. So your million dollars got uh, million dollars. by somebody yeah, else. He's an employee of the state of Georgia. I don't know that we were talking about a million dollars. Someone stole we're it from We're just talking you. about a terrible person that entered our lives. But anyway, continue with the show. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, he went to a big <laughs> rally in New York. Yeah, his yeah. the reception he's getting in New York that is inc- wild. It sure is stunning. I mean, people are lighting the streets. They're cheering him on. Sixty thousand people wanted to go to this rally that seats sixteen thousand. So tens of thousands of people watched outside. A lot of them didn't leave. They just watched on the big screen outside the arena. Um, but here's a look at the big rally. We can do all of this and more, but patriotic New Yorkers must get your <laughs> out to vote. <laughs> Wait, please. Get, out. get a gallon. Get your ass. Harry, get up, Harry. Harry, get your fat <laughs> out of the couch. You're going to vote for Trump today, Harry. Uh. <laughs> get up, Harry. Come on, let's go. 
Let's go, Harry. Uh, so, so he's trying to turn New York red. Yeah, and he's saying this is how you do it. You get Harry, get his fat ass off the couch, and go vote. That's that's how you do it. <laughs> Noah with the with the huh. bleeps. Uh, Such a good kid, that Noah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was kind of a weird day like that for the Trumps yesterday. They were sort of ad-libbing things. Um, Melania did something interesting. She posted a video uh, about her past that I'm, I'm not sure why at this point, at this time, she posted this, but check this out. Mm. Why do I stand proudly behind my nude modeling work? Wait, what? The more pressing question is, uh-huh. why has the media chosen to scrutinize my celebration of the human forum in a fashion photo shoot? Are we no longer Have able to appreciate the beauty of the human body? Throughout history, master artists have revered the human shape, evoking profound emotions and admiration. Right. We should honor our bodies and embrace the timeless <laughs> tradition of using art as a powerful means of self-expression. And there it is. Oh, what? There's a book now in this? Oh, Melania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been doing a couple of series just pushing her book. And that's, so yeah. that's to push the book. Yeah, that's why. Book. Is it a brand yeah. new book? It's a brand new book, You yes. couldn't wait six months to release this? Ooh, Can no, we no, just no, get no. through the we election gotta, first? I know. Ride the wave of Or is that going to get more husband. votes for Trump? There you go. Hmm. It's very weird timing. It's yeah. only a hundred bucks. It's a hundred bucks. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Ooh, wow. But she'll sign it for you. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. She will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it available at bookstores, or do you have to special order it? I uh, special order. I go to Mel- MelaniaTrump.com. It's at the bookstores behind the beaded curtain. Is it about? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it about her life, or it's is about it about her life? Yes. Oh, so it's not just pictures. It's no, not photos. No, no. It's not photos. It's about her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That it's is like a memoir, but not interesting. Hmm. But not. Huh. <laughs> interesting. It's like a memoir, but it's not a because memoir. Because don't you need like words on a memoir? Uh-huh. I think this is mostly like just pictures and her little bit of a story, and then. Huh. All right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> so, <laughs> just for just a hundred bucks, that book can be yours. If you order it right now. Will there be book signings? Well, if you give her the 100 bucks, she's already signed it. You don't have to make wait oh, in line or are nothing. Are all books signed by no, her? No, no, not all so of them. So she's not going to go to like a Barnes & Noble no, and sit there in the lobby that. there? No, she's okay. not doing that. I thought that would be a security issue. <laughs> she's a former first lady. She's not doing that. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. Uh, meanwhile, a Kamala surrogate explained yesterday why, why uh, Kamala would be the better choice on the world stage because can you imagine Kamala Harris on the world stage with foreign leaders? Check this out. But Kamala Harris would be just the opposite. Why? Because she's an inspiration. Uh, Not only is she mm. positive, does she bring hope and optimism, but as a black woman, uh, the, the product of a mixed marriage, she will inspire millions of people throughout the world. Our credibility as a nation, you know, th- that we would be able to allow, our country is so great that we're allowed a woman like that to become the ch- commander in chief, the president of the United States. That is going to send a powerful message all over the world. People like Vladimir Putin are going to say, hey, wait a minute. These guys, you know, they truly have a democratic con- country. They truly are representative. They truly are fighting for all their people. And Kamala Harris. Harris is a manifestation of that. That's what Vladimir Putin's going to think about Kamala Harris that if was she's a elected. Military guy. Oh, that is incredible. That was because that that's what the banner said, right? It said senior military, whatever. I, support. Kamala. I guess. Get out of my face. <sighs> what a buffoon! Holy crap! Vladimir Putin's going to say, "Hey, this is this is a person who came from yeah. a mixed marriage." Yeah. So that means America is truly democratic. It's about to start loving and nukes. But... She's for all the people of America. So now I really like America and I yeah. like her. And I'm going to do whatever she wants me to do. Yeah. I'm going to get right on out of <laughs> Ukraine right now because Kamala came from a mixed marriage. <laughs> we were about to expand the war. <laughs> but, but now boy. I'm not going to. I thought if Trump had been elected, I would have expanded sure. it. I would have gotten together with China oh and we'd my. be invading every NATO country right now. All of them. But uh, now I'm not going to. 
because she came from a mixed marriage. <laughs> what in the world, man? It's just an insult to our intelligence. No it's an absolute insult. Wow, these people are they're dangerous. You talk about danger to society, dangers to democracy. There's nobody more dangerous than these Democrats. They're the worst. In California, uh, Gavin Newsom is cracking down on free speech. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, he officially outlawed the creation and distribution of images or videos created with artificial intelligence known as deep fakes. Um, the meme ban applies... <laughs> Uh, 120 days before the election and 60 days after the election. The law, formerly known as Assembly Bill 2839, allows people depicted in AI-generated memes and videos to obtain a preliminary injunction in court that stops the distribution. Safeguarding the integrity of elections is essential to democracy, and it's critical that we ensure AI is not deployed to determine the public's to undermine the public's trust through disinformation, especially in today's fraught political climate, he said. These measures will help to combat the harmful use of deepfakes in political ads and other content, one of several areas in which the state is being proactive to foster transparent and trustworthy AI. It's just a, uh, <laughs> a way to get people on the side of banning free speech. Mm. Now, people will say, well, yeah, you should be able to do that. Shouldn't be able to do deep fakes about political figures or whatever. But where does this end? Right. Where is this going to wind up? Mm-hmm. It's chilling what they're doing right now. Yes. Chilling. So, hang on a second. Are you saying that this next video that we have, uh, a deep fake, poorly done, of Gavin Newsom endorsing Donald Trump? Are you <laughs> thinking that maybe he maybe. would not allow this to... Yeah, uh, something like this, Exists. perhaps. Okay. Today, I'm here to do something that some may think or believe is unheard of. Yes, the news reports are correct. I, Gavin Newsom, am here to endorse none other than Donald J. Trump for president of the United States. <laughs> Trump's got this knack for making America the center of attention, whether it's on Twitter or on the global mm-hmm. stage. He's like that friend who always has the best stories at dinner. Who wouldn't want that kind of energy? But seriously, in this endorsement, I see an opportunity, mm-hmm. an opportunity for dialogue, for understanding, for maybe just maybe finding common ground. Trump so. is hands down the best candidate in this race. Because if there's one thing I've learned in politics, it's that sometimes you've got to dance with the one who brought you. Or, in this case, the one who's brought the most entertainment. Trump, 2024. (laughs) It's that kind of thing. That kind of thing. That he's trying to avoid. California, you're a lost cause. Oh, man. Jeez. (laughs) Uh, That is something else. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fun stuff. Uh, And speaking of technology and, you know, some spooky technology, uh, there is a... Pre-crime app. Yeah, this this is is scary. Minority report type stuff. Look at this. Listen. In a week, 16,000 people's lives were just ruined because of an app, because of an algorithm that spit out their name. IJOP is a pre-crime platform, a a crime prediction platform where it uses AI and mass data collection. Um, It's put through some very complex algorithms to to literally spit out names of people who are at risk of doing something the Chinese government doesn't like. So the police officers will go to that person's residence, interrogate them, put in more information from that interrogation into the IJOP app, which then goes back mm. to IJOP. And then many times they were they're taken and put in concentration camps. So it's arrest by oh algorithm, gosh. if you will. I and mean, what I always tell people is that you need to pay attention to this because what's happening in Xinjiang is not staying in Xinjiang. It's already in other places in China. Uh, and, it's, and the Chinese government is actively exporting this. It's really terrifying. Mm. I don't like it. Why? Uh, What's the problem? I love. What was it? Arrest by algorithm. <laughs> Arrest by <laughs> Holy algorithm. Crap! Remember that. That is minority that report is minority type report. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And how'd that work out in the in that particular oh, well, envisioned future? It worked out great. It worked out well, yeah. right? A bunch of bad yeah. people went to jail. <laughs> well, future bad people yes. went to jail. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. And, so if you are, mm. if your social credit score. Uh, isn't up to snuff in China, or if 
the algorithm is uh, thinking the worst of you. Mm. Buckle up. 16,000 people already in China have had their lives ruined, according to that Axios reporter. 16,000 people. And and there was another video. Um, wow. Uh, Daguerre Bear stays on top of this stuff, Pat Head. Uh, he sent me a video out of China where these people um, aren't getting paid uh, by the government. And so they they uh, protested, they picketed or whatever, and then they just got arre- they got taken away. I know you're pissed that we haven't wow. paid you uh, on time, but uh, you're not going to complain. How do you about feel it. about being arrested, though? Probably not that not that friendly toward it. Yeah, would but, be my guess. But the Biden Harris huh. administration. Oh, they do the their same values thing. are much more in line thing. with the Chinese government no and question. the communists over there than they are on your side. Absolutely. Uh, All right, let me tell you about uh, Beam Organics. How would you describe your relationship with sleep? Do you struggle to fall asleep or stay asleep? Uh, I I know I do from time to time. Uh, Maybe your sleep quality is affecting your day-to-day life. If you've tried other sleep supplements and nothing seems to work, let me just recommend something for a better night's sleep. Just three words, Beam's Dream Powder. This science-backed, Healthy hot cocoa has completely transformed how I sleep. After dealing with restless nights and waking up groggy, Dream Powder makes all the difference. Dream Powder is guilt-free. It's got flavors like sea salt caramel and cinnamon cocoa and only 15 calories per serving. Unlike other sleep aids, Dream won't cause next-day grogginess either. It's got an all-natural blend of uh, things like reishi, magnesium, uh, th- a theanine, L-theanine, I think that's how you pronounce it, L-theanine. Don't look at me. Melatonin. Nailed it. All Nailed of it. it. Nailed it. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, but whatever it is, however you pronounce it, it helps you fall asleep, it helps you stay asleep, and then wake up refreshed. Right now, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder. Get up to 40% off. For a limited time, by going to shopbeam.com slash patgray and just use the promo code pat at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash patgray for up to 40% off. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Uh, So last Friday, uh, Pope Francis decided to comment on the state of political affairs uh, here in the United States. Love it when he does that. Um, (laughs) Is there anybody else you'd rather hear from on our politics than... I just want to hear from the Pope. Yeah, you just want to hear from the Pope. Just from him. So he was asked what he would suggest to Catholic voters, given that Kamala Harris is in favor of, you know, murdering babies in the womb... And uh, former President Donald Trump would have 11 million migrants deported. Uh, He said they are both against life. The one who throws away migrants and the one who kills children. Oh, my gosh. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, This guy. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. He's not murdering migrants. No, he's not. Throwing them away. Um, If you make them go back home... That is not throwing them away. That is sending them home. Now, how many migrants has the Vatican admitted in the last year? Is it, <laughs> is it more than our 8 million that we've allowed in? Is it more than that? Well, I can't talk about this year, but when I was Jeez. there three years ago, uh-huh. I saw zero, oh, zero. migrants really? inside huh. the Vatican. Zero. Now, did they have like a forty-foot wall they around had the Vatican? A big, uh, beautiful wall with a big, beautiful door. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I thought. Um, that they charge for you to just go inside. Maybe Donald Trump should deliver a speech outside the Vatican wall and say, "Pope Francis, tear down <laughs> this wall." Yes, please. Yes. yes. <laughs> Allow migrants to flow freely into the Vatican. It's a it's a nation, right? It sure is. It's your own country. So allow immigrants into it. It's just it's maddening. I just I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. And, you know, the things he does take a stand on are so shocking sometimes. Like, uh, you just wonder, is the answer to, is the Pope Catholic? Still, yes, because I, I don't know that it is. It used to be one of those obvious things where you'd come back with, uh, do, you want, uh, do you want a chocolate milkshake? Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to use that one anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. You could do the does a bear poop in the woods <laughs> still, because that's probably yes. But again, you but don't know. I don't know don't for know. sure. Don't know. I don't know for sure. <laughs> huh. I mean, there are probably bears who poop in wildernesses, right? Uh, in fact, I've seen it. Yes, they're polar bears. And uh, they don't poop in woods. So, <laughs> wow, that's a <laughs> riveting. It's deep, though. Well, we got riveting ourselves a nature doc yeah. going on right now. <laughs> the majestic polar bear is the unique species of bear that does not poop in a forest. Hey, more like this coming up in overtime. Oh, for real? Yeah, oh, for real. Gonna love bear talk or poop got. talk? Uh, Which one? Both. Sure. We're both. gonna do both. Uh, yeah. For subscribers, we'll do both. Pat forty, get you forty dollars off poop Ooh. talk. Forty dollars off to hear more about poop and bears and stuff. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.